Hello and good day. This is Corey from the Box Scholar YouTube channel. I welcome you to this video in which I'm going to explain why you want to learn to sight read if that's what you desire. Uh, many pianists have the strong desire to want to become a good and proficient sight reader. And uh, that, it's, a, it's a great goal to have, but many pianists don't actually th uh, sit down and actually think to themselves, why? What's the reason? What's the main reason you want to uh, become a good sight reader? Before I answer uh, these questions for you, I just wanted to make a quick announcement. Our uh, Box Scholars uh, distributor and printer of our books that look like this, uh, including my best-selling Sight Reading and Harmony, which you may already have or may not, uh, is having a Memorial Weekend sale, 20% off on all their hard copy books. Not just the Box Scholar books there, but all of their, they have thousands of, of books there. Uh, you may want to take advantage of this sale. Um, I know it's kind of late. I'm making this video on May 25th, uh, 2019. The sale expires on May 28th. So it's only for Memorial Day weekend here in the USA. Uh, I, I know it's a short notice, but I only found out about it yesterday from, uh, from my distributor, Subito Music. So if you want to take advantage of that, just go down below uh, the video here, click on the link, and put in your uh, discount code. Uh, it's Memorial20. And uh, put in your discount code, and you can get any hard copy book from Subito Music Corporation. Uh, delivered worldwide 20% off. That's a good deal. It's a good deal. If you don't have this <coughs> Sight Reading and Harmony book yet, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't have this yet, um, this is a good chance, a good opportunity to get it in hard copy. It's about 220 pages, spiral bound. It's, it's uh, been uh, Box Caller's bestseller for about a year now. Also, another quick announcement. Uh, right here, uh, I have here a just a printout, a rough draft of the title page of my next project called The Well-Tempered Hannon. Hannon, the, ba the way Bach would have done it. And it is a 480 exercises in sight reading, counterpoint, fingering, technique, and transposition. It will be roughly equivalent in size to the Sight Reading and Harmony book. A little bit bigger actually. I think it will be about 20 more pages. It will look like this. It will be a, a nice spiral bound book like Sight Reading and Harmony. And what it is, it's really an exciting thing and I think pianists will love it. It uh, Basically what I've done is I've taken all 20 of Hannon's exercises from part one and I have transposed them to every major and minor key, um, harmonized in thirds and sixths. Harmonized in thirds and sixths. In other words, uh, you're, I harmonize the exercise that is, is in, in C major at a, a tenth above and also a third below. And if you switch it around, it makes invertible counterpoint. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. You'll find out later. But it is in a fantastic uh, resource to have for all of these things. Sight reading, counterpoint studies, fingering, technique, and transposition. Sort of all of those things rolled up into one study. So that's just a, a heads up on what's coming out later this summer in 2019. It's about... 80% complete as I speak right now, so uh, keep your eyes open for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want to explain why you want to learn to become a good sight reader, if that's what you desire. Now, it's perfectly okay if you don't want to do that, then you don't have to do that. But if, if you desire to become a good sight reader, um, the reason is really quite simply to learn a lot of music. You want, you know, as a pianist, we all want to play all the great pieces that we love and, and know so dearly. Um, and that's your goal. You know, you don't want to be stuck in a trap of working on a piece for four months, five months, six months, 
and, and never, getting, had, never getting any progress on the way through. One thing is you, you might want to just slow down a little bit, ask yourself, is this something that I can handle technically? If it's not, you may, may as well just want to ditch that and learn easier music. You may, may just have to uh, you know, swallow your pride a little bit and learn easier music. Not everybody can play everything. If you were working on, let's say, something like uh, the Appassionata Sonata by Beethoven, and you, you have this burning desire, I want to play the Appassionata Sonata. And, but, you know, you, and I've seen this before. I'm not just making this up. Students want to play things like La Campanella, the Appassionata Sonata, the, the Waldstein Sonata. They, they want to play the Goldberg Variations they, in entirety. They want to play all these huge uh, things, mountains of the piano literature, and then they can't even play a, a couple Bergmuller pieces. That's the problem. The problem is uh, many pianists nowadays, I find from my teaching experience, are way above their way above their levels. They're trying to tackle music that's way too hard for them, and as a result, they spend too much time on those things, <laughs> those really difficult things, and not enough time just on things that they can handle, like something that's grade four or grade five, perhaps, grade three, grade four, grade five, like, like these uh, great Bergmuller studies, that very, very well-known Bergmuller, Opus 100, uh, that's just one example. Those are my probably my favorite pieces for uh, teaching in the intermediate to upper intermediate level. And those are the kinds of things that you want to learn if you want to become a good sight reader. Now, if you don't want to become a good sight reader, if it's not important to you, then fine. You can you can spend three years working on the Appassionata or spend three years working on La Campanella, uh, and you will get nowhere. But if you want, if you truly want to learn to sight read, then uh, you need to really sit down and examine what you've been working on and what you should be working on. I have an excellent article that I've recently written on the Box Scholar website. The link is below this video. Uh, you can read the entire article. It is The Art of Sight Reading, Part 1. I spent a lot of time uh, revising that article. Uh, I think I originally wrote it about three years ago, and then since I published Sight Reading in Harmony, I, I totally revamped the article, just basically made a new article on the art of sight reading. I really highly encourage you to go down to the link below this video, click on it, and read that article. Read the article like three times. It's a very important article. I've put a lot of work into that, explaining what sight reading is, how to get better at it, why you want to do it, and uh, my recommendations for music that are excellent uh, sources for learning the sight read. For instance, Bergmuller and other, other uh, pieces of that nature. And now I'd like to talk about a piece that I uploaded yesterday, and in fact that's what inspired me to make this video. It's called the Romance de Amor. It is by Manuel Ponce, the great Mexican composer. It is the first time I had ever played anything of Ponce's. I, I heard a piece of his played on, on YouTube of, of a, a performance. I think it may have been a CD. I'm not sure who it was. But I really liked it. I liked the music. So I uh, investigated some of his music and I discovered I really liked this piece, Romance de Amor. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous piece. And it's four pages long. I would say it's about grade five, perhaps grade six. Um, interpretively, it's probably above that, but I'd say technically around, say, grade five or grade six. And I printed this out yesterday from IMSLP, uh, yesterday morning. I laid the four pages out on my piano, like this, and I had never seen it before, never seen it, never played it, never taught it, and I sight read through it a couple times, okay, from beginning to end. I sight read through it a couple times. Then uh, throughout the day, I spent uh, an hour or two, perhaps, perhaps a couple hours uh, throughout the day when I had free time practicing bits and pieces of it. And then I started putting it together. 
And then I think later that day, in fact, I recorded it. So if you'd like to listen to that recording uh, that I did, uh, that should be right before this video in, in the Bob Scholar channel. The Romanza de Amor has six flats. It's in the key of E flat minor. Not a very common key, E flat minor. It's a beautiful key. It's a very difficult key to read in if you're not a good sight reader. I happen to be an excellent sight reader. I have always been a good sight reader. And so this was absolutely almost like a piece of cake for me to sight read. I mean, I read through it a couple times, you know, made a few mistakes here and there, uh, put pieced it together in, in an hour or two, and, and I was ready to record it, right away ready to record it. That's what you need to aspire to. And also, sight reading is not just notes. If you weren't just pounding out notes on the piano. You know, if, if you're just pounding out notes, that's not... Absolutely gorgeous. You know, from the very beginning, when I was sight reading this, from the very beginning, I was thinking about the music. I wasn't just thinking about notes, I was thinking about music. So the better you can develop your sight reading skills at a low level, grades one, grade two, grade three, and build it up, then once you build up that foundation in sight reading, then, then you've passed that stage to where you're only thinking about notes. Then you, you can actually approach a piece of music like this. You can, you can print it out or buy the book, open up the book, look at it, play through it from beginning to end. It might not be 100% perfect, but it will at least be musical, and you'll learn how to put expression and musicality into it from the very beginning. Uh, you know, when I was sight reading Romance de Amour yesterday and getting ready to make my video later that day. Um, I was always thinking about the music. It was never just the notes. So sight reading is not an easy thing. If you're, if you're not good at it, you can get better. It, it is definitely something you can improve on, but the main thing is to read a lot of music and to, to constantly learn new music. And, uh, of course, you know, get my Sight Reading and Harmony book if you haven't had, don't have that already, and follow the suggestions in here. Uh, I really want to help you become a better sight reader, and um, I, I'm concerned about pianists nowadays, piano students, that, because um, I see a lot of it now. I, I really am worried that too many pianists are going way above their levels trying to tackle music they can't tackle, and as a result, their sight reading becomes worse and worse. The, more, the, the longer time you spend on these really difficult things that take forever to learn, the worse your sight reading will become. If you want to become a good sight reader, read my article, link below this video, and uh, follow the suggestions. I promise they'll work for you, and... Um, Thank you for watching this video. Until we meet again, bye.